Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to Good Morning Revolution. I got that down pat, y'all. I'm going. Hey, hey, Rosanna and uh, hey, Martin. Good morning, uh, Revolution. Michael and uh, let's see, Anita and uh, Scott. Scott, hey. you're back from vacation. No yep. more snowshoeing. Yep. Snowshoeing and skiing up in the Adirondacks. Uh, oh, you're living large, man. That's wonderful. Wonderful. I never had tried snowshoes. I used to get on a sled when I was a child. We would go down to the park and slide down the hill. That was that was fun. And you can do that last week in New York because <laughs> the snow to foot. Wow. And I, uh, um, yeah, man, it was a lot of a lot of snow. Global warming, I, terrible. Texas. I didn't think there were hills in Youngstown though. Oh my God, don't come to me with that Ohio Columbus flatland mentality, Anita. We're in Northeast Ohio in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Very okay. hilly. <laughs> Just cause you got rows and rows and acres and acres of corn um, and wheat and uh, growing, that don't mean that everybody does. Now, when you get to Northeast Ohio, it gets very hilly up around Lake Erie and then south into Pittsburgh and West Virginia and Steubenville and all of that. Ain't that right, Michael? That's right. You're talking to someone who was living on a, I guess, a mountain in, in Athens. So, yeah, that wasn't fun going down that hill in the winter. <laughs> that's another that's another part of it. Uh, but snow in New York and snow in Houston. Mm -hmm. And Terry Crews went to Cancun. <laughs> Rosanna, he he's your neighbor. Caught. Uh -huh. He got caught. He got busted and, and had to come back. Mm -hmm. He tried to even uh, blame it on his kids. Right. Yeah, his kid, his kids do. needed the trip. <laughs> this is totally horrible. busted. Totally. Busted. One of his neighbors, his wife sent out a Ted Scott. His wife sent out a text. <laughs> yeah, to a bunch of her friends um, saying, oh, yeah, we, this great hotel, the Ritz Carlton, it's only 309 a night, good security, which I assume means you don't have to worry about, you know, poor people uh, breaking yeah. down your door or whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, why don't you join us? And this was a, this was like a week in advance. And one of her friends leaked those to the New York Times. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe we don't have to eat the rich. Maybe they'll eat themselves. <laughs> Oh my goodness, can you imagine these people? They're so arrogant, yep. the arrogance of power. It was a book, I think, uh, in the 60s or something like that. Anita called it arrogance of something or other. Um, but, you know, will his constituents elect him again, uh, Anita? Uh, Ted Cruz, I don't know, yeah. uh, everybody really, I mean, his even people in his own party uh, don't think very highly of him. He seems to really have um, dug himself a hole this time. But we'll see. I mean, I don't know when he's up for re-election next. Um, but uh, but Texas is definitely turning blue, and now they're they're turning blue with cold, unfortunately, uh, right now. And I think that um, that experience uh, where they're seeing government ineptitude up close. And uh, really affecting their lives, that might have a big difference in the long term. Nothing like a broken water pipe to change your political outlook. That's right. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll mm -hmm. see. You know, some of those people are so blinded by hate and ugly and chauvinism and racism and sexism that they just they're just going to do what they're going to do. That's what my father used to say. You know, he said, Joe, he said, there's some people that are just so, uh, you can bring no matter, you can bring all the scientific evidence, all of the data, all of the, and it's not gonna change their mind. Uh, and he was reflecting on Rush Limbaugh and that outlook who died, um, Rush Limbaugh died the other day. He had lung cancer, some kind of cancer. And, you know, my dad used to listen to him and it would drive us crazy. We're like, dad, why are you listening to that nonsense? And he said, because the guys at the, at the, at, in the mill listened to him. And he said, I needed to know what they thought. 
and and it's true. There was a current in the steel workers union that listened to that foolishness, and that's what they believed. Uh, uh, Michael, what do you think about Russia's? Like, did you listen to him down at OU? I didn't listen to him a whole lot, but he is very popular in in Ohio, and I thought it was interesting. You know, yesterday on the the internet, people of all ages, I saw all people on all parts of the political spectrum, even some former Republicans saying, you know, he's burning in Dante's uh, eighth circle of hell, you know, with the liars and the, and so, but I, I think his death represents, you know, it's almost symbolic. I think that it represents a, um, an end of a certain period. I think that uh, I, we've talked on this program about the Republican party splitting. We just mentioned Ted Cruz. And but, so I think that we're going to start seeing a, uh, division, a further division, not only in the Republican Party, but in the conservative movement as a whole. And I think uh, Prager U, Prager U, I think that I'm pronouncing that correctly, is kind of taking the place of Rush Limbaugh and some of these other uh, conservative voices, even trying to get some uh, young, you know, hip uh, movie stars, uh, music celebrities to come across as uh, conservative uh, minded, like Mario Lopez, for example, from Saved by the Bell, you know. So it's really interesting. We'll see how this uh, pans out. Yes, we will. Well, you know, he's gone, but his influence uh, lingers. And, uh, and that's part of the problem that we have to deal with, that ongoing influence. And Anita, uh, or whoever wants to take this question, I, I, I heard that when you're dealing with people like that, don't talk about politics, talk about bread and butter issues. Do you think that's the right way to approach it? I, I think that is a, a good way to approach it. We were just reading uh, William Foster's pamphlet about organizing methods in the, in the steel industry. And he says, number one issues are the economic issues. And you really have mm. to push those as hard as possible. So push sure. Him. I, push him. Push him. Also, though, recognize that, that there's, I, I think we, we have this conception that if we can just you know, get people to focus on the real economic issues in front of them, then, you know, they'll be able to tune out all the, the ideology. But as capital accumulates, as capitalism develops, the kind of ideological machinery of the ruling class gets more and more intense and more and more uh, effective as well. So it, I know I, I sometimes, I sort of think that um, it's becoming harder and harder for people to actually see the economic realities mm -hmm. in front of them um, because ideology intervenes even in how they perceive their own um, their own material conditions right so well, that's I, an interesting question is the machinery becoming more effective Rosanna, or is it turning more people off like i was listening to the stuff about ted cruz right for three days. Now, I, I understand that he's a jerk and he's an arrogant braggart and a fool and privileged and all of that. But when you focus on something so long, when millions of people, you don't deal with the sources of the story, it, it gives people the idea that it's kind of fake news. Am I wrong? And that's kind of why people are tuning out. I I, th I think in a way, yes, I, I agree that, that you know this gets to be like so what kind of a thing. But I I I think that's why you know the Communist Party is really needed to bring that clarity to show people that the situation they're living is not necessarily all their fault or even their fault, you know, and how and to connect and make those links of how why things are the way they are. And I know that's one of the reasons why I joined is because it really made sense to explain why are there poor people? Why are there rich people? And what is all of the dynamics? And so to be able to, be able to link the two together and make it personal. Um, you know, I had a comrade who told me, because I asked him, well, how do you change people's minds? These people who have money and stuff. And he says, well, you, you see that boat over there? You take that boat away from them and they'll turn and start listening to you. 
Because <laughs> it's true, they, they, they make that connection. Well, why did I, you know, why did my boat get repossessed? Mm. You know, and things like that. So it's making that link, that personal link is really key, I think, in, in this battle of ideas that we're, you know, we're engaged in. Pocketbook, hit them in a the pocketbook. That's an important, mm -hmm. speaking of pocketbooks, uh, the minimum wage. $15 an hour, we fought for a tooth and nail over the last demonstration after demonstration, trade unions, fast food workers went out on strike. Biden said, I'm going to support it. But now it's getting ready to go into the Congress and the Rescue Act, but they're saying it can't pass. Um, it can't pass, Michael. They're saying that Mr. Biden is saying, well, you know, it can't do it through reconciliation because the parliamentarian is going to rule that it's not really according to the rules, but we can overthrow the parliamentarian. But that would mean that the vice president would have to come in and break the vote, break the tie, and that's the nuclear option. And we want to, is that what's going on? I think there's two senators in, uh, or Democratic senators in um, the Senate who are opposed. I believe it's Manchin and then a, a, a woman from uh, mm -hmm. Arizona. And oh. so, you know, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that they can't, like you said, you know, it seems to be now a, a mass movement behind this, you know, numerous trade unions, um, even some more moderate voices, you know, endorsing the minimum wage and student uh, debt forgiveness, like Chuck Schumer came out in, in, in favor of that as well. And so it's kind of, you know, at this point, I've been reading a lot of reports that, you know, we should be demanding 20 by now, especially in this time of pandemic. And so something needs to be done because um, there's just no excuse for it at this point during this pandemic. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Poor People's Campaign had a great day uh, of, of action on uh, directed right at Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia, who is one of the ones standing in the way of it uh, going forward. Um, and it was just a really effective um, presentation from workers who struggle uh, to keep food on the table and keep their families together on, on whatever, 7.25 an hour or some, something like that. So West Virginia has maybe a little lower standard of living or cost of living, but definitely uh, you can't live on a minimum wage anywhere in the United States. And my solution to that is take mansion salary and cut it to eleven dollars an hour <laughs> and tell that fool to live on that for a year mm -hmm. and donate the rest of his money to those who are making seven dollars an hour mm -hmm. i think that that would but i want to ask a question uh, these centrists these neo liberals um do you think that that's the dominant view now in the leadership of the Democratic Party is, I think that's the, or has it changed? I think that's the wrong. I, like, let, let me let me let me sharpen the question, Scott. For you, I was watching a debate between Richard Wolf and the uh, economist from Princeton. What's his name? You know who I'm talking. The one that won the Lawrence Nobel Summers. Prize. Summers. Who? Lawrence Summers. No, no, not Larry Summers. He was at Harvard. Uh, Liberal. Huh? Krugman? Yeah. Krugman. Krugman. And uh, Wolf was saying, Mr. Krugman, you, you're a centrist. And Krugman said, yo, man, wait a minute. I'm not no centrist. I'm on the left. And Wolf said to him, boy, you used to be on the left, but the left has moved left. <laughs> you too slow. You're running too slow. You need to get some of those Nike shoes so you can run faster. You're in the center now. So, so Scott, I, I'm wondering, has the center moved to the right or to the left? Or this what the thing, hell is going on? Is it a static it's idea? Of trying to you know, place individuals somewhere. On, I don't think that's the, the real question. Um, OK, okay uh, not individuals. The, dominant the forces, class, you know, the class, the class. The dominant forces are a, uh, a people's democratic, often socialist leaning left that is growing and 
uh, the right wing, increasingly extreme fascist leaning mass movement that is also growing led by, uh, by the ruling class. Those are the two dominant forces in the center. Um, and this is a, a trend that Lenin already identified in, in 1905. You have this vacillating uh, you know, liberal bourgeoisie, you know, the people that are faithful to the ideals of democracy, but are also bound to their class interests and they're inconsistent and they swing this way and that. So the, the real question right now is what will it take for uh, those, that liberal bourgeoisie, that centrist, moderate, you know, the Bloombergs, the, the Pelosi's, the, you know, whatever, the, the um, Schumer's, uh, whatever, to bring them under the sway of the growing people's movement rather than, you know, the growing fascist movement. Because as Can long that as that happen, what's that? Okay, lightning round. That grouping of people is more under the influence of uh, the left than they are the right. Michael, yes or no? I would Ding! say Time's I would up. say I would say no because they're under the influence of where wherever the money is. That's what I would. Under say. the influence of where the money, Rosanna. They're more influenced under the influence of the left. Or yes or no? Oh gosh, yeah. I I would say no. Uh, I think that that you know they're being they're pacifying those um you know in the movement they're trying to pacify it, but there's interest is still you know where the money is. Anita, yes or no? Uh, yeah, no, I don't think they're more under the influence of the left. I think they're, um, they're, they're true to their, they know their class interests, unlike uh, so many others. So how do you explain the Democratic Party platform? Michael, I mean, Scott, yes or no? Uh, I think they're being dragged kicking and screaming to the left, but the, the power of the right gives them gives them an out, right? Gives them the chance to say, well, but we have to, you know, we had this Republican option. We have to compromise with our, uh, with, with the Republicans. We have to, so it's not, yeah, they're, they're being dragged under the control of the left as a condition of, of holding power, but uh, um, it's not, it's not steady. It's not consolidated and there's, there's a long way to go. And they needed to, they needed to, to, to uh, get elected. And uh, I think that espousing leftist positions helped them uh, win the election. And may maybe the answer is in the question. Maybe they're, since they're pulled by both the right and the left, that's why they're quote unquote center. You know, it's that like third way mentality, you know, that constant uh, compromising. Because then you get people, I don't know, like Warren, we'll use her for an example. She's progressive on many, many issues, but then you bring up uh, Venezuela or Cuba and then it's, oh, she's a centrist. So I do think it's constantly in flux and it's not black or white because even individuals, you know, can uh, be great on, you know, labor issues and then be an anti-communist and a red baiter, so. And this is why the people's movement is so important because it's the people's movements that's going to push them in a different direction. It's still, we still have to be united. We still have to get and provide that pressure uh, no matter, no matter what, because that's the way that we, we keep them you know, uh, on our on, on our end, or not on our end completely, but you know, we 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 push them to maintain the platform and to and to push the you know bring the needs of the people forward. Some people are arguing that the neoliberal paradigm, whatever neoliberalism is, because depending on what day you wake up on, they have different definitions of it. But the idea of austerity, cutback, and all of that has tax cuts for the rich, uh, you know, a bread and water for the poor, all of that has reached a um, breaking point. And, and that they're, they're internationally has reached a breaking point and that there's a, a, a paradigm shift taking in other words, a shift in their agenda because they have to reconceive how they're going to manage capitalism, save it, and that, that, that this is, they're in transition. 
of trying to define what that is now. So will they go back to uh, the Rooseveltian uh, Keynesianism, you know, uh, or, or, or will it be something else? And this struggle between capitalism and socialism, between public and private, between the people and the rich is part of that whole struggle. And, um, and to the extent that we're able to push them in one direction or another, we were able, we, we, we will be able to push and influence that agenda. Well, I think that that just about does it. Um, we have a Black History Month event on Sunday uh, at seven, at eight o'clock Eastern. They're going to be panelists who wrote uh, for Tony Pesanowski's edited book, Faith in the Masses. At, at eight o'clock, be there, be square. It, it'll be a very interesting uh, debate, discussion, dialogue uh, among several uh, people who have done a lot of study about the party's history. Uh, and, um, and then the next week, the New York District is having a Black History Month event featuring, among others, the esteemed Dr. Gerald Horn. So uh, we want everybody to uh, stay in touch, stay tuned, and stay in the fight. Stay in the fight. That's the stay most the fight. important thing. As Osana has been pointed, you got you got to you got to have faith in the masses. <laughs> That's right. And in class and democratic struggle. Take care. Have a great week, everybody. Bye. -bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.